Welcome back. Today we will be looking at the physiological response to trauma. So let's first start off by looking at the mediators involved. And on the diagram, I'll point out the origin of each mediator. So in the hypothalamus, we get the involvement of ADH, which is your vasopressin. In the pituitary gland, we see the involvement of aldosterone and ACTH. Moving through to the pancreas, we have the involvement of insulin and glucagon. And in the adrenal gland, we typically see the involvement of your cortisol and endogenous catecholamines. If we look at the immune system, we typically see the involvement of activated complements, as well as your multiple inflammatory mediators like TNF-alpha and cytokines. And finally, we see the involvement of activated platelets and leukocytes. Right, so let's move on to the second part of the video, and we will discuss what this response results in. If we focus in the muscle region of the patient, and this will help you to remember each fact, we typically see increased metabolic demand, so your patient is in a catabolic state. We also see abnormal synthesis and breakdown of proteins, and typically the patient has a negative nitrogen balance. If we move through to the kidneys of the patient, these patients typically have water and electrolyte imbalances, and they have an altered availability of micronutrients. If you focus on the wound of the patient, think about red blood cells, so that these patients are typically in a hypercoagulable state. Next, we'll focus on the pancreatic region of the patient. So, within this region, we see our patients are typically hypoglycemic and have an insulin resistance. They also have a poor utilization of glucose as an energy source. They have diminished glycogen stores. And they're also hyperlipidemic and they utilize lipids as an alternative energy source. And finally, let's look at the response in the immune system, where we see a release of our cytokines our pro-inflammatory proteins and our hormones. Right to the next part of the video, we'll be looking at the clinical manifestation of our trauma patients. Right, so typically in our trauma patients, what we see is patients who present with tachycardia. These patients also present with tachypnea. If we look more north on the patient, our patients typically have low-grade fevers. If we move more south, our patients typically also have oliguria, so decreased um, kidney or urine output. If we stay on the heart, our patients also have peripheral vasoplegia, which is characterized by decreased blood pressure. Initially, our patients present with weight gain due to water retention, and this is followed by weight loss, secondary to a decreased muscle mass. If we look at the skin and the white blood cells, our patients typically have leukocytosis. Moving through to the stomach, our patients are typically, or well, they present with a poor appetite. If we look more north, our patients are typically confused and they have abnormal sleep patterns. And if we focus on the immune system, our patients typically also present with an increased C-reactive protein. Within the liver, we typically see hypoalbuminemia. And finally, in the thyroid, we see elevated procalcitonin levels. So factors that worsen the response are patients who have shock or severe hemorrhage, any inappropriate fluid management, massive transfusions or major surgeries, delayed surgeries, sepsis and organ failure, any genetic factors, or uncontrolled comorbidities like diabetes or renal disease. So how do we reduce the duration and degree of this response? Or well, we typically prevent these factors from occurring. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I shall see you in the next one.